And what Jehovah Jireh means, it means the Lord will foresee. So God will foresee. And God foresees because he has foreknowledge. And he, he has foreknowledge because he's omniscient, which is one of his attributes. So God is omniscient. And he also, Jehovah Jireh also means the Lord is all sufficient. So God is all sufficient, which is one of his attributes. And that means he has everything. He needs nothing. So God has everything. He needs nothing. And he knows everything. So even though you may have a need that you don't even know you have, maybe this need is two months down the road or two years down the road. God knows you have that need, and, he will, and he's able to meet that need, just as he's able to meet your need today, and he knows of your need. Everything belongs to God. He needs, he needs nothing and can provide everything. And Psalm 50, verses 10 through 12, says, For every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hillsides. I know every I know every bird of the mountain, and everything that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, okay, God's being sarcastic here because He can't be hungry. He said, "I would not tell you, for the for the world is mine and all it contains." So God owns everything, and He can meet your need. The Jehovah Jireh first appears in the Book of Genesis, chapter twenty-two, uh, where Abraham was sacrificing Isaac. God provided a ram instead. And, I, and Abraham called that, that, the Bible says Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh, for the Lord will provide. And that was, the Lord provided for Abraham, but there was also a prophecy given by Abraham, because God will provide the ultimate sacrifice for us, which he did in Jesus. So God provides Christ for you, for your salvation, but he also provides for you in the other day. Think about it. His provision is all around us. We put a seed in the ground, and it grows, right? And the plant grows up, and the root grows down. Now, we just think about all this too commonplace, but that's a miracle. That is a miracle. Now, some people will say that's how evolution designed it, but no, God is the one who's written the DNA into that plant to make it go up, the root go down, the plant grow up, and provide food for us. God wrote that in that plant. It did not happen by chance. It's crazy to think. That happened by chance. In the Gospel of Matthew, it states, How can we think that God would provide for the sparrows and, and the flowers and not provide for us? Right? And it is God's, God's provision comes in many forms. It comes in the form of food, shelter, and clothing. And in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus also states that God provides the flowers with their abundant beauty. God provides us with their abundance. He is a God. Think about the squirrels and all the abundance of acorns that are out there. Secular science wants us to think that the reason an oak tree produces so many acorns in the course of its lifetime is so it can reproduce itself. Come on, do we really believe that? That an oak tree produces millions upon millions of acorns in the course of its lifetime in order to produce one more oak tree? Or maybe two or three for some oak tree that didn't produce all the acorns. No, the reason an acorn. An oak tree produces acorns is to feed the squirrels in my backyard, and to feed the squirrels in the forest, and the deer in the forest, and the other animals that eat acorns. And not only that, those acorns taste really good to those squirrels, right? When, when I'm sitting there on my deck, and I look up, I mean, there's feasting going on in that tree. It's feasting in the abundant joy of the acorns. They must taste really good to the squirrels, and they really take pleasure. For God is a God of pleasure, even for us. Walnuts grow on trees. And many people enjoy eating walnuts. Now, I'm allergic to them, but I can't eat them. But many other people eat walnuts, and they really enjoy them because they taste good. Well, who made them taste good? God made them taste good. So God is a God of pleasure. And, all, and the walnuts are also something black bears like, too. There's a black bear in a walnut tree. And uh, this is in Tennessee, Smoky Mountain National Park. And he's up in that tree, and he's going like this. He's shaking it. He's shaking the tree, and the walnuts are falling down. And when the walnuts fall down, he he would go down and eat the walnuts. And then he'd climb up and do it all over again. And God was providing for this, this black bear. And you notice, when I'm watching this, it looks like he was doing it with absolutely no fear. You would think that bear would be afraid of that. It looks like he's going to fall. But he's not fair at all because he's, he's doing what God designed him to do. And when we do what God designed us to do, we should do it without fear. Just like that black bear. And God even provides when we think there's no provision at all. Here's a white-throated sparrow, and it's 
just after an ice storm and everything's covered with ice, but God is providing for that spirit. A little burr-like thing, I don't know what it was, but that's what it was eating along with cardinals and juncos and some other birds. And uh, uh, another thing about God's provision, when I first got my a, a new a new lens for my camera, I wanted to test it out. This is I was living in Florida at the time, and there was a there was a park uh, across from the subdivision where I lived, and we had just rain upon rain upon rain, and the, and the park had flooded in lots of areas, and there was a lot of insects and other things living right in and around that water. Well, the birds, such as these egrets, these snowy egrets and ibises and other birds, came to feast on the insects. But you know what? They didn't just sit there with their mouth open, ah, and the insects would fly in. No, they had to go get the insects. They had to hunt them and take them. But God provided for them because they were doing, they were being birds that God made them to be. And with us, God would provide for us, but we have to go out and work. We have to do it. We have to do what God's called us to do, and He will provide for us. Omnipotent. This, little, this word literally means all-powerful. 